trans surfer and the trans surfing curious. My name is Renee Garcia, guys, and this is Trans Surfing TV. And today on Trans Surfing TV, for you hardcore trans surfing junkies like me, we are going to be doing a reading from Hacking the Technogenic System by Vadim Zeeland. Pup, 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 poker face. These are actually being translated by one of our top contributors on the Facebook group, Mohil Jawal, and then they are having some language correction and fine tuning by Teodora Salvia. We greatly appreciate both of your guys' efforts in making this knowledge available to us. I myself haven't even read this. I glanced at it briefly and I do know that it is on slide work, advanced slide work. So, you know, this book is not yet translated into English. In my opinion, from what I know of the knowledge in this book, it is indeed advanced transurfing, extremely advanced. So those of you that are new to this channel, don't be intimidated by the knowledge. Once you've listened to Reality Transurfing Steps 1 through 5 on audiobook or read the book, um, it'll all make sense, right? It's kind of like building a puzzle when you don't have all the knowledge yet. It's like you're putting the pieces into place and then you're finding corresponding pieces and matching them up. And before you know it, the whole of reality transurfing knowledge begins to form an image. And this is kind of like, you know, some of the more challenging pieces to sort of place. This is the advanced, advanced stuff. So again, definitely for, you know, the trans surfer that is experienced and don't be intimidated if you are a newbie to reality transurfing. Before I get started, remember to like this video and comment and subscribe if you appreciate what we do here at Transurfing TV. And don't forget to join us on the International Transurfing Institute Facebook group for more stuff like this. I mean, we're doing all sorts of cool things daily on there, so definitely join us if you have not done so already. And I will put the links to the courses below Reality 2.0, Tufty 2.0, Mo Money, Becoming Magnetic. We've got a bunch of stuff for you to dive into if you are ready to take it to the next level. All right, so let's get right into it. Question. You wrote saying, it is necessary to display the slides every day for at least half an hour. This thought nestled in my head. If we look at the issue from the outside, it becomes clear that this half hour is a habit, such as brushing your teeth, for example, or morning sports. And I mean that it is not really necessary as a rule and commitment as much as it is necessary as a regular periodic orientation towards the target's frequency. In everyday practice, however, everything, tur everything turns into a little nightmare. <laughs> what happens is the following. For several days or a week, I review the slides every day for at least half an hour, and everything is going well. But here I am waking up on a beautiful morning with the following thought in my head. I have to take time to show off the slides. And at the same moment, I have a fear that there may not be enough time to do so. But the mind does not even want to hear anything about such an excuse. And that is why it creates an excess potential that makes the danger of neglecting any regular work on the slides a stifling anxiety. Even if the danger is just an alleged danger, yet no one feels in him a constriction that invades everything in his chest. At the same time, the importance of the goal presses with urgency. And now I remember your words that visual imagination should not turn into a heavy commitment. And this is what makes me more anxious. It's a vicious circle. And it's better just to say madhouse. Answer. From time to time, you have to free yourself from any work and set aside a day for rest only. 
especially when there is no success in the completion of any work. The Castanadians, followers of Carlos Castaneda, call such a state an inactivity or inertia. And when you allow yourself, according to a previous plan, not to do any work, it is dissipated. At the same time, the energy that has been accumulated as a result of the surplus burdens, as if you were working and making effort. At the same time, the intention to perform the expected work is stimulated. A tension occurs like a strong tendon. And when this string enters into action after a period of inactivity, the energy that was previously accumulated is released. And there is another way. In order for regular work not to become a burden, it must be transformed into habit. However, this requires, in the first stage, to make some efforts, especially at the will, sorry, at the level of will, but after the work becomes normal, it no longer constitutes any burden. The best thing in this context is to practice your habit of showcasing slides in a noisy manner while you do your usual daily chores. This method is the most effective method. Whatever work you do, always return your thoughts to your goal time and time again and balance the information that is available with what you are striving to achieve. In other words, always keep your target inside your display device on a firm footing. Work consciously and never worry. Okay, so quickly before I get on to reading the rest of this, what I would like to say is um, I have a video called Slide Duration. I will put the link below. I know a lot of people have a lot of questions about slide duration. And when I'm asked this question, I guess I kind of reveal to the, those who ask me what a maniac I actually am in this knowledge. And that my answer is, you know, when people ask me, how long do you play your slide, Renee? I play my slide all, all day. I'm living in that slide. That's why I'm able to achieve what it is that I intend to achieve very rapidly in my reality, right? So it is a chore if you're not feeling it. Absolutely. When you feel it, you don't feel a sense of burden to run that slide. And this is really such a valuable part of reality transurfing and exactly why heart and mind coordination is so necessary, right? If you're feeling heart and mind coordination, that burden is not going to, um, you're not gonna feel burden to run your slide. You're gonna feel power in running your slide. What he was talking about in regards to taking a break, taking a day off, resting, it is just like when you exercise and you back up off your exercise, allow your muscles to build up, and then the next time you go at it, you're even stronger than before. Don't ever get hard on yourself for not running your slide. As long as it's your goal, and as long as that slide is pleasing to you, both heart and mind, you could forget about the slide for a week. The next time you return to it, it's gonna be even stronger, right? So again, just to reiterate here, you should be running your slide all the time. Don't feel bad if you aren't. It's you building up some reserves. So when you step back into it, it's more explosive, right? And get used to running your slide normal daily activities. My favorite time to run a slide, when I'm on my live stroll in the morning, when I'm in my car driving, when I'm standing in the grocery store line, pretty much all the time really, because I love it, right? I love it. And anytime I have a moment where I'm in pause, I go into that slide. Anytime I'm doing anything that's closely related to what it is I feel um, directly contributes to that slide materializing, I'm there, I'm in it. So again, ask yourself this question, is it your goal? Is it your slide? If it is, then all will be figured out, but get used to running that slide 
when you're doing normal things in your day and don't become like intimidated with needing to do it daily or whatever. You'll, you'll, you'll be stronger if you take a break, right? It's totally okay. Okay, so hence this chapter can be summarized through the following points. One, if the goal is sufficiently considered and difficult to attain, then the outer intention may initially offer mostly modest options. In such a situation, these humble gifts should please you. And at the same time, you must trust that precious gifts are on their way to you. Two, the slide does not have to be a strange picture on the screen, but rather the image must be the supposed image of your life, you personally, and in this case, the image will be integrated over time, then it will be realized in the daily reality gradually. Also remember that there is no need to set a time frame. It can be said, however, that each one of us should have his or own unique slide technique, right? So asking others what, how, what their slide technique is, develop your own. Everybody has their own thing. Everybody sees different results via different means. Three, every human being has his own reality, even if they live next to each other. And I am unable to mentally, metaphysically influence the reality of another. Others are also unable to influence your reality. It is true that you can create a common reality by making joint efforts, but in such a situation, you must share the qualifications with others. Four, I advise that you do not fail to write down the forms of your thoughts, for you are thus creating in the literal sense of the word, the image and form of your reality. In the morning, you can set directions to achieve something. And in the evening, you confirm your successes and the steps you have taken in this direction. Stronger and stronger will be fixed in the reservoir of your mind. And then accordingly in your everyday reality. This is super powerful stuff, guys. This is amazing. Five, there is no need to resist doubts. And if doubts invade you, let them be a little in your head, then feel free to return your attention to the goal as if it has been achieved. Your attention stream may divert from time to time here and there. So do not bother because the main thing in all of this is to keep your average attention drawn steadily towards the goal. In the meantime, it should work with the slides regularly and without regression. Then temporary doubts will not have an obstacle for you. All you have to do is display in your mind the image of your festive life as you imagine it to be. This is not just a bank account, right? Live your own virtual world. And I call such a pursuit a purposeful flight of clouds. With time, the doors will open that allow you to enter the festival hall. Boom. Seven, in general, the mirror of the world is something of great quality and the soul is quickly taken indirectly. But it is not necessary for you to have a headache thinking about how to achieve your dream because the mirror itself will show you this. The difficulty here is limited to only one thing. Do not allow yourself to be taken over and absorbed in the illusion of the mirror. Naughty, naughty. In everyday reality, especially in the first period, something will happen completely different to the things you are viewing in your virtual projector, your slide, right? Which forces you to question and causes you worry and panic. In this moment of confusion, a person throws his tape and begins to watch the events that are taking place and panic has gripped him. And this is the illusion that the mirror suggests. Oh my God, this is awesome. Okay. Eight, what is required now is to remain firm in your position until the end. Rather, I almost say you must be cunning as well. Play this poker face game. They threaten me, deceive me, make fun of me, and I stay cool and go on my way uninterrupted. Oh my God, I think he wrote this for me. <laughs> I don't care about that nightmare that appears on the screen, 
but I pe peek cunningly from time to time to see which tape is being displayed on the projector. No, he can't read my poker face. <laughs> Don't allow yourself to get caught up in the game. They're trying to impose on you, but play your own. In all cases, the image in the mirror will change sooner or later to be compatible with the tape that you are reviewing. It simply has no other way out. Those are the rules of the game. Oh my God, I just literally got goosebumps. This is insanity. Okay, nine. If you remain steadfast and firm in your position, then quickly you will see how the details of the past begin to disappear little by little from the sector of your world and then appear on its ruins the signs of the future, the upcoming reality the future that you yourself drew in the impossible myth that you created. This is like replacing stage decor items. The only difference is that the, the change is barely noticeable and looks like another reality started penetrating from an abject, abjective world to your real world, adjacent world to your real world, sorry. The more imprudent it is, the more natural the result will get. At the end of the day, the mirror will believe you and walk in obedience according to the illusion that you have created, just as you have done before. So the intuitive significance of this game and the state of being presented in it can be summed up as follows. There are those who create illusions and then there are those who just watch them. So you choose your role. Oh my God, I love this stuff. I'm such a sucker for this stuff. It's insane. <laughs> Ted, it is not good for you to wait to make working on sliding targets a commitment that burdens you. So 11, so the regular work does not turn into a burden, make it a habit. 12. The critical importance in slides is the intense focus and not diligence you put. Okay, so this is, um, from my opinion, how much you feel it with all your senses rather than the frequency in which you play it. 13. The slide technique does not assume any restrictions or strict rules. You can and should do so as you see fit and as often as you like. 14. In your hands only, your world is at your disposal. I am completely incapable of mentally influencing the realities of others. 15. If you do not stop at the limits of the slide and its imagination, but go beyond this to write down what you see, then the effectiveness increases significantly. This is why I am a firm believer in writing down your slides. This is pulling it from behind the mirror into physical reality. And when you see it actually on paper, it starts to really resonate more uh, abundantly in your life. Therefore, you attract exactly what it is you need to attract to make what is written on that piece of paper come true. 16, the slide should be worked on regularly and continuously, and then there will be no place for doubts. 17, visualize the day off, the emptiness in your mind intentionally, display it as you imagine it, live in your virtual world, fly behind the clouds purposefully. 18, don't allow yourself to get caught up in the game that is imposed on you, but dictate yours. 19, play with the world a game. Believe, can't believe. Impose on the mirror what your imagination has created. Give it an order and say to it, now look here and do what I command you to. <laughs> 20, the term poker face means to not show any emotion in your face. If you persistently and if you persistently and consistently review your film in your mind, reality will sooner or later coincide with it. Re reality does not have to hide and that is its nature. You are not the only follower of reality, but reality is dependent on you as well. But the question remains, which of you owns the initiative. Wow, hot dog. So that's pretty good stuff. Super powerful. So really it's, it's, it kind of sounds like, you know, information that's a little bit contradictory, but it's actually not. 
what Vadim Zeeland is saying here that is really, really powerful is that your slide should become habitual, right? Just like you're not even, you're not even trying. At the same time, if you back up off it, it's totally okay because if it's, it's meant to materialize. So just getting into a habit of running it systematically without it being like a burden, right? Anytime anything becomes a burden, you've just shot yourself in the foot because this message to the mirror is not going to be one that's going to cause that mirror to want to respond. It's going to sense more your reluctancy or your feelings as though it is a burden and the whole system is just going to become a little bit jumbled. It's not going to, the, the, the image isn't going to appear smoothly, right? It's going to take a lot of starting and stopping. And I think this is where a lot of people get lost in the reality creation practice is they just kind of like, see a little bit, then they forget, they back off it, they don't um, feel good about doing it every day, They then they remember, then they don't, it's not working, question, doubt, all that kind of stuff, and it just, it doesn't work. It's about running it all the time, running it systematically all the time and getting into it, and again, not looking to the mirror. And I really like the part when he talks about you know, they can ridicule me and then all this stuff can be playing out in the mirror. And if you can just forget about the image that it's projecting and continue on your path of running your slide, taking your actions, having your thoughts in the directions of that slide, your frequency, all that kind of stuff, it's going to happen. It's absolutely going to happen. And for those of you that know what is going on behind the scenes with me and reality transferring, this is the perfect example, right? It doesn't matter what's happening. My slide is being materialized, so it absolutely works. Okay, so do you guys like these hacking the technogenic system lessons? Comment below because there's a lot of them and I wanna hear your thoughts if you want me to keep going and I will do so if you do and if you don't, we'll discontinue this series, but let me know your thoughts, everybody, and thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye, guys.